Hello everyone and welcome to another Pyro Gaming video. Today is Tuesday, December 12th, 2017, and that means it's time for another weekly reset in the game Destiny 2. Although this is kind of a special one because with this reset we also got a patch that made a few changes in the game that we're going to talk about throughout the course of this video. So starting with the raid, one thing that Bungie did include in this patch was a fix, quote unquote, for people who did not buy Curse of Osiris that got locked out of getting the prestige raid or Nightfall achievement or trophy. So Bungie's temporary fix to this is they dropped the prestige version of the raid down to 300 power. So now if you don't own Curse of Osiris, you can do the prestige raid and get your trophy. They also took the Nightfall out of that trophy, so it is just for the prestige raid now. Now that being said, don't get all excited and say, oh, well, you know, now I could just go do the prestige version at 300, so it'll be easier and still get some high level loot. Well, no, you can't. Because Bungie also made it so that you're not guaranteed 330 plus drops from the prestige version of the raid for the foreseeable future. So that being said, if you already have the prestige raid trophy, then there's no point in you doing the prestige raid until Bungie fixes it. Just do the normal raid, they're both at 300 power, and we, yeah. So your weekly flashpoint is going to be Mercury this week, and that is also where Cade Six's treasure chest are going to be. He's only selling three this week, I have to assume that's just because Mercury is such a small destination, and that's not going to be a permanent thing going forward. Now, an interesting thing about this week's Flashpoint on Mercury, it's not just public events. It says complete public events and defeat Vex Cabal Conquerors and defenders or Vex Defenders on Mercury. Now, that is a relief to me because I was thinking the other day, if Mercury is ever the Flashpoint, are we just going to have to wait around for hours on end for that one public event to spawn? So I'm really glad that they included some alternative methods to complete that. Looking at the rest of our milestones, it's pretty simple stuff, or pretty normal stuff, I should say. Nightfall, Raid, Call to Arms for Shacks, Clan XP, Three Heroic Strikes, and the Flashpoint. Your Nightfall this week is going to be Savathun's Song with Momentum and Anomalies. It's been a whole two weeks since we did this, and it was two weeks before that. I'm getting kind of tired of this Nightfall personally, but you know what? What are you going to do? Here we are. And yeah, so there's that. And that's pretty much your only changes up here, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the tower, starting with Tess, and see what she's got for us this week. The gear that she brought is the Capacity Shell, or cap cap Captaincy Shell? I don't even know how to say that. We have a Guardian Pink Transmat Effect. Now, it's worth noting that if you collect three of the same Transmat Effects, you can go to Amanda Holiday and turn them in for one random Legendary Transmat Effect. That's like your Cabal Ball, your Vex theme thing, so on and so forth. So you can just buy three of these right now and go turn them in over at Amanda Holiday and trade them for a Legendary one if you so choose. She has the Frumious Blue and the Metallic Sunrise Shaders. We have our Fireteam Medallion like normal, and we have some new things here. We have a Gleaming Boon of Vanguard. When this is used during a strike, all players receive an Eververse gift at the end of the strike. Only one gift consumable may be used per player in any activity. So if you buy this, once you finish a strike, everybody in your fire team, assuming you activated this, will get some kind of Eververse gift. That's pretty neat. I like that. That's a great addition. And for 350 Bright Dust, I'd say that's reasonable. We also have the Gleaming Boon of the Crucible. And it does the exact same thing, only this one costs 750 Bright Dust as opposed to 350 Bright Dust for the Vanguard one for Strikes. And I have to assume that the reason being is because you can go through Crucible matches in about 6 minutes, whereas these are going to take you about 12 on average. So you can burn through these about twice as fast. I'm assuming that's why they cost almost twice as much. For the armor piece this week, she has the Omega Mechanos Cloak for the Hunter and the class item for both the Titan and the Warlock as well. For our ornaments this week, they are both for Rat King, so that's fun. For the ship, we have the sh Sailing Shield, I almost called it the Shailing Sealed, but yeah, I actually like that style of ship, so that's pretty neat. We have the Striped Abandon uh, Sparrow, couldn't remember the name of it. We also have the Dancy Dance, and we have the Confused Emote. So yeah, some fun stuff going on here. Now let's go take a look at Zavala real quick and see what new stuff he has. They did make some vendor changes to Zavala and Shax. So let's see what we got here. Zavala this week now sells, well, going forward as well, he actually sells armor now. So yeah, uh, looks like you need Vanguard Tactician tokens to unlock all of these. And I'm not sure exactly what the 
cap is. I know that you have to turn in certain amounts of um, engrams in order to unlock these. I believe this one's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and I believe this one's 10 as well. The weapon will be the only one that resets each week, so once you hit rank 10, or I guess turn in 10 engrams, then each week going forward you'll be able to buy these, assuming you have the necessary 20 legendary shards and 10 vanguard tactician tokens. Now down here we have the ornaments, we had those last week, so I'm not going to talk about those, and then we have this new thing down here, Boon of the Vanguard. When this is used during a strike, all players receive a Vanguard gift at the end of that strike. Now, Bungie talked briefly about these. They said that these things could basically give you anything from like a Vanguard weapon to a piece of Vanguard armor to a round of exotics for your entire fire team. So it's worth noting that, again, same like the Eververse uh, consumables that we have now, if one person on the fire team uses one of these, everybody on the fire team gets a gift, whether they're in your actual fire team or they're a random that you matched with. So I think that that's pretty neat, and for only 10 legendary shards, I will go ahead and buy a few of these and move on to Lord Shacks. Real quick, you can see that I have a notification over there. That actually seems to be some kind of a bug because it's, going, it's telling me to go to Ikora, but Ikora has absolutely nothing for me. I've seen a few other people on Twitter mention this as well, so that seems to be a bug. Or maybe Ikora is supposed to have something and it didn't come in. I don't know. But taking a look at Lord Shax, let's go ahead and see what he's got for us. I probably don't have, yeah, claim two reward engrams to unlock four, six, eight, ten, and ten for the weapon. So I was right. The reason I don't have these unlocked is because one, I don't play a lot of Crucible, and two, when I do, I turn them in on my Titan because that's the only uh, Crucible gear set that I actually think looks nice. So moving on down here, we have the Boon of the Crucible. When this is used during a Crucible match, all players receive the gift at the end of the match. Same thing as the other one, and much like Eververse, these cost more than the Vanguard ones, and again, I can only assume that these cost tw about twice as much uh, because it takes about half the time to do a Crucible strike as a, or a Crucible match as it does to do a Vanguard strike. Now, real quick, guys, before I let you go, one of the new things that came with this update is, of course, the new Masterwork system. So if we take a look here, you can see that it says Legendary Shards and 10 Masterwork Cores. You can get one for the Vanguard or you can get one for Crucible. Now what Masterworks actually do is think of it as kind of like a mod, except these do very specific things. So for example, if you do uh, a Vanguard Masterwork, it's going to show your PvE kills. If you do a Crucible Masterwork, it's going to show your PvP kills for that specific weapon. In addition to that, it's also going to generate orbs on multi-kills that you can actually pick up yourself, and you also get a random bonus stat, something like 10% increased reload speed or stability or handling or something like that. Now, I haven't actually gotten a Masterwork weapon yet, so I haven't actually got to use one. I just signed on when I started making this video. So I'm going to come over here to the Cryptarch where he is selling these uh, little legendary engrams for 25 legendary shards apiece. I'm going to buy a couple, and I'm going to see if I can get a Masterwork weapon real quick. Dead Man's Cure. Let's see if we have a Masterwork on that. We do not. Okay, so that's trash. This might take a little while. I might have to speed this video up and just resume talking once I get one. So we'll see. Well, that's a helmet. That does nothing for me. And that's a chess piece. That does nothing for me. Ugh. Yeah, so I'm going to speed the video up, and we'll just resume whenever I get one. Oh, wait, no, I'm not, because this one has a gold ring around it. This looks like a masterwork. It is a masterwork. Look at that. We got one. Okay, fantastic. So, yeah, masterwork weapon. This weapon op or generates orbs on multi-kills and displays the number of enemies defeated by using it. So, let's see. Reroll the bonus provided for this masterwork. So, you have to have these masterwork cores, it looks like. So where do I get these Masterwork Cores? I can't do anything with this. Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna dismantle this. That's what I'm going to do. I love seeing that, that gold ring around it like we used to see in Destiny 1. I'm going to dismantle this and see what it does. Ah! Okay, I got a consumable. Where is it at? There it is. Masterwork Core. So that's how you get them. That's how you get the Masterwork Cores is by dismantling weapons that have a Masterwork mod. Okay. Let's get a few more of these and see if we can get another one. Bad news. What do you have? 
you have bad news. It doesn't have a little gold ring around it, so we know it's not a masterwork. Keeps giving me trash, man. Keeps giving me trash. Oh my god, I don't want armor. I don't want boots. Okay, annual skate. What do you have? Nope, no masterwork. Alright, so there we go, guys. I think that that's enough. I'm not going to burn through all my legendary shards right now. I want to save some for Zer when he brings that faded engram so that I can actually get an exotic I want. So that is going to bring this video to an end, guys. I definitely appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed it, click like. If you're new to the channel, click subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, I fucking love you. Thank you, guys, and take care.